When you go all in on a goal, an objective, a mission, that process deserves respect. And do you know what happens when you just show up and check the box? You leave a lot of potential on the table. What could have been achieved was once a choice. And choosing to show up in a certain state, a specific mindset, with a hyper-focused goal and incomplete preparation. Now that, that is the standard. Every mile matters during a marathon prep. But these big marathon pace workouts need to be treated with a little extra tender love and care. I like to treat them just like race day. Show up prepared, show up focused, and show up a little bit nervous. Because trust me, it pays off. This marathon prep is our way of helping you reach your goals by showing you what we are doing to accomplish ours. Throughout this series, leading up to the Buffalo New York Marathon, we will provide you the tools, resources, and knowledge to PR your next race. Training as a hybrid athlete has taught me so much about endurance, from marathons and Ironman triathlon and 100 mile ultra trail races. I'm now setting the goal to run a sub 250 marathon. It's time to lean in and go one more. Right now, we are 90 minutes out from beginning the workout. So I have one English muffin with peanut butter, banana, and honey. And then in this shaker bottle right here, I have two scoops of G1M Sport, and I have three scoops of electrolytes. So the goal is to get fuel, being carbohydrates in, and I wanna do a big sodium load to boost blood volume. So this is my pre-workout nutrition. So this morning we have a big 20 mile workout and that workout has some marathon paced splits in there as well. So it's almost 6 a.m. and it's Saturday morning. We are about to head to BPN HQ. I'm linking up with Yoli and Jeremy and then we're gonna link up with Jeff Cunningham, my running coach, and we're gonna knock out this workout. The past couple days leading into this, I've been super dialed in. I've been thinking about this workout every single morning throughout the day, at night, it feels like it's race day. And this is how it felt last year during marathon prep. When I have these big workouts, you have to treat it like it's a race day in terms of nutrition, hydration, recovery, mindset, because these workouts, they're really important but they're also really big confidence boosters. So, here we go. So today's workout, we have 20 miles total. It starts off with seven easy miles, and then five miles at a 625 minute per mile pace, one mile easy, three miles at a 620 minute per mile pace, one mile easy, two miles at a 616 minute per mile pace and one mile easy. And I can't reinforce enough how important these big workouts are on, for me, the weekends, but once a week leading into, and the closer you get to your, your marathon, your race, these big workouts at race pace. Because like Jeff always says, if you expect to show up race day 
and you say you're gonna hold a 6.30, a 6.45, a seven, an eight, a nine, a 10 minute pace, doesn't matter what it is. If you expect to hold that pace, and if you've never sustained that pace for a certain amount of mileage, man, you are just wishing, and you're wishing without a plan. And it's really important, for me at least, what I found last year and last year's marathon and all these other races, treat these big workouts like race day. I mean, you have to get in the zone, in the mindset where you should be nervous showing up for it. If you show up nervous, for me, that's a really good thing. And I'm testing all these different variables for these big workouts that I want to implement for race day. The last three days prior to this day, I carved up like I would for a race. I got in the mindset. I, I'm treating today like it is marathon day. So that when you start running and you start hitting those splits and those paces, you're gonna show up race day knowing if you can hit it or not. It's not a guess. You know I can either do this or I can't. So we're gonna warm up and get started. This is not overly complicated. We're dialing in pace. This just maybe four or five seconds a mile faster than gold marathon pace, that first five mile segment. You know, we're gonna get to the three mile segment and then by the time we get to two mile segment, we're doing two things, we're accomplishing two things. Hardening the legs to the reality of running 620 pace, okay? 19, 20 miles into a run, we're also hardening the soul. Um, marathons are hard and I wish I had a magic wand or some pixie dust to make it easy, but if it was easy, they'd call it bowling or darts that's not what we're doing here so we're hardening the legs we're hardening the soul um and this is the stuff that's gonna make magic when we have to race yeah. so let's just go do it yep seven easy five one three, seven five one three one two yeah hey and the great thing about it is is for his long run workouts this is the easiest one of the three. <laughs> that, I don't know if that's good news or bad news for him. For me, it's great. I just get to drive around in my truck and drink coffee, so <laughs> it's on him. Uh, I'm just gonna do a gel at five, okay. 10, 15. Yep. <clears throat> I'm gonna carry this first gel. Okay. And then you guys have two gels in the truck. Okay. I have like probably 100 grams of carbs in me so far this morning and 2,500 milligrams of sodium. Perfect. going shopping for weather this is what I would buy you know when you have a 20 mile workout not just a 20 mile run you don't like to have things in the way such as horrible crap weather which is pretty typical for mid-April in Texas um, but we won the weather lottery today so no complaints there Right now we're about five and a half miles in. At mile seven, we transition over to the 625 pace. Now nutrition during this workout, I'm doing a gel at mile five, 10, and 15. I've already had one. Each one of these has about 45 grams of carbs. So legs are feeling really good. I feel recovered. I feel fresh. It's always a good sign when I don't really feel my legs. They're just there. They're not heavy. They're not fatigued. Overall, going to this workout, we did what we had to do. We did the right things. Recovered, fueled, slept, hydrated. So we're in a good spot. I 
effectively how do you feel because you know once you get six to seven miles in you know if you're feeling good even when you're running easy and he said he said he's feeling good today and the fact that he is running so well um right now wednesday workout was really good and then the fact that he's feeling good today um that really really bodes well for the next uh um seven eight weeks for sure nice and smooth kind of concentrate on keeping your face and shoulders relaxed and just sort of sort of zone out for lack of a better way of putting it you can you can pile up all of your enemies in one pile and they're not as big of an enemy as you are to yourself in the minute that we start realizing that we have so much power we have so much control of our own destiny by simply respecting ourselves enough to set ourselves up for success. If we simply do that, doesn't mean be selfish. We can be a lot happier if we're successful and then we're more useful to others. We're a better friend to others. We're a better boss to others. We're a better spouse if we're in a happy place because we've set ourselves up for success and then our success then can spread happiness and success in our circles. I coach a ton of people. Common thread is consistency. People think it's massive talent or some secret uh, 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 protein drink that everybody drinks at exactly 8.05 p.m. Uh, no, it, it's none of that. It's just consistency in the way we manage our lives. And then what happens is, is we end up spitting out one successful endeavor, one achieved goal after another, after another. That's the key. Gotta be like butter, baby. You gotta be like butter. So, five mile segment is done. I did all of those miles under a 620 minute per mile pace. Number five was a 612 pace. Now we have a one mile easy and then we're gonna do three miles around another 620 pace and then you know keep finishing up the workout but that five mile segment felt really really good. So we got about another half mile of easy and then we're going to the next split. Now my thought process going through that last segment is that there is a clear difference and don't get them confused there's a clear difference between fit and frail. And it's very easy for endurance athletes to want to get leaner, to get smaller, to get faster. And what happens, instead of getting more fit, you get more frail. Frail is not strong, frail is not durable, frail breaks. So, through that process of building fitness, are you trying to get fitter? Or are you actually getting frailer? I feel pretty fit right now. You get 
those type A weebie jeebies, as it were, when you get seven, seven weeks out from a marathon, because it's go time now. It was sort of like, hey, we're in the playpen and we're sort of, you know, doing our thing and, you know, hitting some workouts. And But once you get to that sort of seven week mark where we have to really start being super, super dialed in and intentional with the way we're doing things and you're having a good day, I can tell you that it's a combination of motivation, relief, and excitement all sort of balled into one. I'm as competitive as anybody out there. And whether or not that's actually running or coaching, the reality is, is um, this is the United States of America. And what we do, we win and we succeed. Damn it, let's go. Basically, the whole next mile is downhill. Just focus on good mechanics. We're about to hit 17 miles right now. Yep. Right? Yeah. Let's finish this sucker up. We need to go like deep into a well. Yeah. You know? But as long as we're in the six teens, I'm gonna have the camera just on it. Okay? Really, really good. Really good. Let's go. So we just finished up the three mile segment. All miles were under a 620 pace. So we have about half mile left of our easy mile and then our last segment, which is two miles. Right now, you know, we're almost 17 miles into a workout. Legs are starting to feel pretty heavy, fatigued, but overall, I still feel comparably fresh. So all we got is two miles left. That's it. Just a couple more minutes left. Just focus on uh, maintaining your form, keep your face and shoulders relaxed, and let's finish this up. Fantastic day. Three. Just keep on stacking these bricks in the fitness wall, but this is not just a brick. This is a whole damn cinder block, baby. Let's go. I can tell the first mile. I was like, yeah. yep, crushing this. Well, let's go over. Let's, let's go. go. Over, let's go over paces real quick. Yeah. Hey, you want to shut the truck off for a second? Let me sink. Make sure it sinks. Well, at least we know that I'm in good enough shape to run one jogged mile with Nick Bear. So I'm uh, I'm peaking right at the right time, right? I mean, I remember you running like sub six miles on that treadmill a few weeks ago. I, I, I can I can break six minutes in a mile if uh, there's enough uh, there's enough pressure involved. Well, it's a data to pull. So within one mile into that workout, I knew it was going to be a good day, and we hit all the splits very nicely. So, you know, first seven miles were just kind of warm up easy miles. We had a 746, 724, 714, 731, 720, 726, 721. And now that first five mile split, 620, 615, 617, 619, 613. Then we had a one mile easy at 724. And then 613, 614, 618. Another easy mile, 737. And the last two, 604 and 605. And then my last easy was a 754. 
So overall, 20 miles in two hours, 17 minutes, eight seconds at a 651 minute per mile pace. And Jeff and I are extremely pleased with that workout. I just did the math. That's 613.8 average for your 10 fast miles. Mm -hmm. The goal was to probably average 620 on the nose. Actually, probably average 622-ish. Actually, was what the goal was if you look at what we set time-wise. And so the goal isn't to beat the workout coming in, but when you effortlessly just sort of slide through the workout and you're exceeding the paces by a little bit and your effort level is commensurate with what it should be, then that is a perfect day. That was honestly, I would say, one of the best workouts I've ever had in my life. And Jeff texted me like three days ago and he said, come into this workout nervous. And that completely flipped the switch in my head where I remember all my workouts last year because last year was some of the first workouts I ever did, like 20 plus miles at marathon pace. And I was so nervous going into those workouts. And when you're so nervous, you try to eliminate and mitigate any risk or variable that can hold you back days leading into that. So like I've, talked about before, I'm going to reiterate, nutrition, carbs, hydration, electrolytes, sleep, rest, recovery, and then mentally being nervous going to the workout. Don't be overly confident going into the workout. Be a little scared because you're going to put every single ounce of effort into that, that allotted or allocated pace for that day, and you're going to come in, you're going to crush it. Overall, today was huge confidence booster. Oh yeah, and as a coach, it's a confidence booster for me too, because as a competitive animal, I look at these workouts as a litmus test um, as to whether or not I'm doing my job properly. But I proceed with an immense amount of um, excitement, but caution, but also the one thing that I really wanna emphasize for everybody is, is this is about self-respect, and we don't couch it in those terms. But you got to have enough self-respect as an athlete to care about your performance and care about yourself enough to eat well, sleep well, hydrate well, be uh, 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 appropriately dialed in to the point where you're nervous going into a workout, right? That's only six miles shy of a full marathon. And you proceed with that level of self-respect and you did that because you care about Nick Bear enough to make this matter because it does matter and then look at the result. Yeah. Respect yourself enough to set yourself up for success. That's what I'm trying to say. Nailed it. Well, like Jeff said when I was out there running, instead of laying bricks today, we were laying cinder blocks. Absolutely. So that's another episode of Marathon Prep. We will see you guys in the next one. Let's go. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like it, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you don't miss out on our last episode of Marathon Prep, which is right here. It is frequently asked questions.